What's up guys, I'm Newbie Dave and today we're building an iron farm. Let's get started. How's it going guys? I gotta tell you, I am really excited about today's build. I've been looking forward to this since I started this series, and I'm also a little bit nervous because <laughs> I don't have good luck with iron farms. Uh, I've built a number of them, and I'd say I probably have about a 50% success rate. So not great, but they are incredibly useful. Now, you may be asking yourself, Hey Dave, how do you farm iron? It doesn't just grow out of the ground or grow on trees. That's true. Uh, if you just go mining for iron, you have to run across lots of iron ore, you have to mine it up, you have to take it back and smelt it into iron ingots. It's a big hassle. So you can't just grow iron from the ground. You can't just make it out of thin air. But these guys can. Let me introduce you to the Iron Golem. These guys are the self-proclaimed defenders of villagers across Minecraft. Now they're a little tricky to kill, but when they die, they drop three to five iron ingots guaranteed. So we're not going to be farming iron as much as we are iron golems. We're going to be building a farm that creates the conditions necessary to spawn an iron golem in a way that we can then kill them and collect the iron that they drop. So this is kind of what the end goal is that we're going for. I decided to give you a preview of what this is going to look like when we're done, because if you've never seen an iron farm before, then most of the build is not going to make sense until the very end. So the idea is we've got a bunch of villagers in the middle here. They're all bound to beds and workstations inside the structure. And that's going to cause iron golems to spawn either in the middle, like that guy just did, or up on top here. The water is going to push them down into the middle chamber area, and that lava inside is going to kill them. The iron will drop down into the hoppers, which will then deposit it into this chest to be collected. So this is more or less what we're going for. This is just a purely functional build. There's no aesthetics to it. So what we're going to be doing in our survival world is going to look a lot better, but it's going to work the exact same way. All right, so before we get started, we need to talk a little bit about chunks. I know we've already talked about chunks previously when talking about simulation distances and stuff, but for this build, it's going to be particularly important because we want the entire build to fit within one chunk. Now a chunk is a 16 by 16 block area of the world. Every map is made up of a bunch of chunks. They start at Y0 and go all the way up to Y256. And the whole world is broken up into these things. Now the way that you can find chunks, there's a couple of different ways. Uh, one is to just look at your coordinates and divide the X and Z coordinates by 16 and then find the nearest whole multiple of 16. Another option is to use a website called chunkbase.com. You go to this website, you select the Spawn Chunk Reader app, you put in your X and Z coordinates and it will tell you which chunk you're in, but more importantly, it'll tell you where that chunk begins and ends. Now, I don't really consider this cheating because you're just using a website to kind of do the math for you and make sure that you get it right. Now, you can go put in your game seed into this website. It will tell you all the biomes around you, where you can find dungeons and valuable resources. That would be cheating in my opinion. Now the third option involves using a resource pack. There's a resource pack called Chunk Visualizer, which I'll provide a link to in the video description. You download this uh, .mc pack file, you double click it, it's going to open in Minecraft and install the resource pack so that it's available. Then you just go into your map, go into your resource packs, activate it, and it'll show up in your active resource packs. Then when you load that map, what this resource pack does is it adds all of these blue and red lines on all of the chunk boundaries in your world. You also get these green lines every uh, 16 Y levels, but we don't really care about this. We just, we're interested in the red and blue lines. So this is very helpful for just visually seeing where all the chunk boundaries are. Then you don't have to do any math. You don't have to go to some website. It's just all right there in the game. Now, you might be able to tell why I don't use this resource pack all the time when just playing because it's kind of annoying. It doesn't really make for a great gameplay experience, but it is very useful for finding your chunk boundaries. So I'm going to use this resource pack to find the chunk where I want to do this build. I'll mark it and then I'll log out, disable the resource pack and uh, come back in. 
So like I said, this entire build is going to need to fit within one chunk. It will fit if it's overlapping chunks, but the problem is we're going to be using villagers that are kind of spread out within this build. And so if part of it is in a different chunk, as you start to move away from that chunk, then part of it will be unloaded, part of it will be loaded, the mechanics will break, and things could get wonky. So it's best to just have the entire thing in one chunk, then either the whole thing's loaded or it's not loaded. Now, because we've already sort of turned this whole area into our farm area, where things are going to be kind of growing and running on their own, I think that this is where I want to build it. I was originally going to build it on the beach back there behind my house, but I realized that would be blocking the nice view of the mountains at sunset where I like to do my outros, so I'm not going to put it there. Uh, I think what I want to do is use this chunk right here. Um, yeah, yeah, I like that. So we can get to it either by cutting through the farms this way, or we'll be able to get to it by going around the farms that way. And I kind of like how it's sloped. Uh, this chunk needs, or this build needs to be built kind of up a little bit. You could build it on the ground, but then we're going to have to dig down. Uh, so this is going to be kind of nice because we can build it on the ground on this side, and then the ground will slope down, so we'll have kind of an easy access to get under the thing, which will all make sense later. Now, fair warning, this is going to be a long, complicated build. Uh, it's going to take a long time to build. It's going to involve villagers. It's going to involve a lot of villagers, and villagers are a pain to work with. So yeah, there's going to be lots of cuts, but I will cover all of the individual steps, and I'll try to do a good job of explaining what I'm doing so that you can follow along. Uh, first, I need to set up kind of a little work area. I forgot to do that ahead of time. All right, and then I need to mark the edges or the corners of this chunk where I'm going to be building within. And then I can unload this resource pack. So let me just put a couple of blocks on each corner of this thing. Okay, so I've got this area marked with dirt columns, dirt stacks. So I'm gonna go unload this resource pack and be right back. Okay, and we're back, sans resource pack. So now I need to clear out the trees in this area. Uh, I'm not going to completely flatten it because, I, like I said, I like that it kind of slopes down. I think that'll be nice, but I do need to get rid of these trees. All right, so we've got this area cleared out. I did ever so little terraforming just to kind of level out these two corners, uh, and that was really it. Um, I left some of the trees around it. We might need to clear out some of these as well later just to give us a little bit more space to work, but that's future Dave's problem. Okay, so we need to find the middle of this area. To do that, I'm just going to start in the corners and just start placing blocks diagonally until I get to the other side. It's going to look a little bit weird since this area isn't flat. <laughs> uh, okay, so that's one diagonal. We'll do the other diagonal. And really, I can just stop here because we found the middle. So here's the middle. Get rid of all these other blocks. Okay, so our middle is two by two. We actually need this to be three by three, which is unfortunate because that means it's not going to be perfectly centered. But it's really, it's not that big a deal because this thing's so big. So I'll do a couple more blocks around that. And just to kind of help mark it, I'll put a few more around there because I don't want it filling in with grass and then forget where it is. So that's going to be the middle. Now we need to fill that whole area with hoppers. We need nine hoppers. So we're going to need a lot of iron for this. We're going to need a couple of chests. Ironically, it takes a lot of iron to make an iron farm. Okay, so we'll dig out this three by three area. Now you can put your hoppers down one more level into the ground if you want. Um, uh, I don't want to do that because that means that my chest will also be in the ground and I don't really like getting into the ground to get to my chest. So this was the 3x3 three three area. I'm going to put my chest, I'll uh, put it right here, and then we need the hoppers that all to all connect and go into the chest. So we'll do one hopper going into the chest. All of the other hoppers need to get into this one. So I need to shift right click and just connect those things together. So there's three going into that one. I'll put. 
I'll put three on this side going into the middle ones and three on this side going into those. So now anything that falls within any of these hoppers will end up in our chest here. To test this, I'll just quickly throw some dirt into each of these and we should get nine dirt in our chest. Perfect. So this is going to be where everything ultimately falls and lands. Now we need to surround this thing and build up a little ways. So let me dig out some more. I don't know what it is about this game, but it always seems to rain in the middle of one of my builds. Okay, so we need to surround this thing. I'm going to use, first of all, for my build, I'm gonna use a lot of basalt and blackstone. For this particular section, I'm going to use blackstone. And I want to use light gray glass. So I'm going to dye this glass gray. Uh, so let me see, I'm going to need, I'll start with 16. I don't remember exactly how many I'll need. I can make more if I need to. And I'm going to put a temporary block there, then go up one, two, three, four. Uh, I think that'll be high enough. And then I will put blackstone on each side of that. And then we need to repeat this on all the other sides. Uh, now we're going to leave this front side open for the most part, but I do need one extra block. I'm going to need a stair because you can't put solid blocks over a chest or it won't open. Okay, so upside down stair on that side. And we can still open the chest, but it looks solid, so that's nice. So I'm going to do one side of this, but I'm going to leave the rest of it open because we're going to need to get back in here. So to finish filling out the inside, we're going to need a lot of signs. So let me get some more of my wood. Turn some of these logs into planks. And I'll make a couple of signs. We're going to need nine, so I will make nine signs. And I'll stick the rest of this in my chest. Now, the signs are going to go on the inside, not on the very bottom level, but one level up from that. So I'll put one there, there, there. And we're just going to stack these things all the way across. No! <sighs> creepers. Creepers! I hate creepers. And we're back. <laughs> Absolutely nothing wrong happened. Uh, nothing to see here. Moving on. So we're going to fill this whole thing in with signs. Uh, and I'm one short because nothing bad happened earlier. And there we go, nine signs. So why are we putting these signs here? Because signs, even though you can pass right through them, they prevent things like uh, water from flowing through. So you can actually put liquids on top of signs and the liquids won't pass through the signs, although mobs and players and other objects will. I'm gonna fill in part of this with the blocks that we need and I'll leave a little opening. Now we're gonna to have to be quick. So I'm gonna put the lava against the far side and then fill the rest of this in. Leaving a little bit of gap down here because we're not done. So you can see the lava filled in that whole area, but it's not falling through the signs. So that's exactly what we want. I could have done this from above, but we're down here, not up there. So that's what I did. Okay, last thing we need before we close up the kill chamber is some campfires. But these are going to go on top of the hoppers down here. So crouch, place a campfire. We're just gonna fill the whole bottom area with campfires. Okay, so the campfires line the bottom. This is nice because uh, the iron, any items that fall onto the campfires will just pass right through them into the hoppers and come into the chest. Uh, oh, there's our sign from when nothing at all bad happened. So now we can finally close this thing up. And we are done with the kill chamber. Uh, this is a little bit dangerous. You could wait and uh, fill this thing in at the very end so that you don't accidentally fall into it. But to get around that, I'm just going to cover the top of this with dirt. Uh, that's going to serve two purposes. One is our safety, so we don't fall in here while we're doing the rest of the build. And also, it will keep the smoke from the campfire from getting in our eyes and making it hard to see while we work. So this thing is already one, two, three, four, 
we're going to go up one more on this. Um, I may have done my counting wrong at the beginning. You can actually make this thing as tall as you want. Uh, but yeah, we're going to go up one more. And then um, I'm going to put blackstone in the corners of this kill chamber so that it looks nice. Uh, but then the rest of this is going to be basalt going out. So we need to go all the way out to the edges of our chunk and fill this whole thing in except for the kill chamber uh, with the building block of your choice. Now this step does require a lot of building blocks. Your area is 16 by 16. You do the math on that. That means it's going to take 256 blocks just to fill in the inside here minus the kill chamber. Plus we're going to put some walls above it plus a second layer. So yeah, I've got a lot of basalt and blackstone to do this thing. So yeah, definitely recommend blocking this thing off if you put it into lava up front like I did. Probably not a great move, but uh, more than once I've kind of backed over this area and would have fallen into my untimely demise. Newbie Dave. Okay, so I finished building the first floor. Uh, I threw in some polished basalt just to kind of mix things up and kind of change the direction of some of these pieces just to add a little bit of variety. Now we want to go around the outside. Uh, we want to extend outside the wall by one to build up our walls and we're going to go up two. So I'm going to put a temporary block here and actually I want to use blackstone bricks for this. So I'm going to drop these in my stone cutter, get polished blackstone bricks. Yeah. I'll do this for the walls. So temporary block there, go out by one and build the walls all the way down. Okay, so we got our blackstone brick walls in. I'm gonna go ahead and put some torches around in here because while we're working, I don't want any mobs to spawn. That would just not go well. And then in each corner, I'm gonna build a three by three platform. And again, I'm gonna use blackstone for this. Once this thing is done, we're probably never going to come inside, and so it doesn't really matter what the inside of this thing looks like, but I just like to make it look nice, just in case. You know, take a sense of pride in the work that you do. Okay, so we've got our 3x3 three three platforms in each corner. Um, like I said, this is Silent Whisper's design, but I've tweaked it slightly because he has you placing eight villagers in one corner, four villagers in another, and eight villagers in the third. And in my experience, that's just really hard to pull off in survival. Uh, you watch some of these YouTubers and they do all their builds in creative mode. And when they do stuff with villagers, they're like, yeah, just put some villagers in here and you're done. And getting villagers into a very small space in survival mode is a huge pain. And so I find it actually works a lot better to spread them out. And so I'm going to put five villagers in each corner here. Now we need a space for them to live. So we're going to put uh, some glass in a sort of diamond shape like this. And each of the villagers are going to go inside of these glass cubes. Okay, so we've got our villager chambers in place. Now we just need to fill them with villagers. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is where the pain starts. So getting the villagers in here is going to take some time. So getting the villagers in here is going to take some time. We need to get them from our villager farm on the coast into each of these holes. To do this, I'm going to transport them by boat uh, along the river over to that shore. And then I'm going to build a minecart system that gets them from the shore into each of these holes. So first I need to go by build some uh, minecart rails and a minecart and set that whole thing up. Now I think I'm going to actually dock the boat down here because I need a big flat area to do that. I'm going to kind of clear this out a little bit more and then I'll start building the rail system up. I need to start with some powered rails because uh, this is where I'm actually going to load the villagers into the minecart and so I needed some powered rails to give it that initial boost. 
and then I will do some normal rails after this. Now the momentum from the powered rails will eventually run out and so we're going to have to put some powered rails every 10 or 12 uh, blocks or so. So another complication with rails is you can't turn and go up at the same time. And so in order to get up here, we're going to have to do our turn and then go up and then do a turn. So that's pretty far. I'm going to have to put some more powered rails in here to get up that incline. All right, so I finished the minecart rail system. The reason it looks a little bit weird, kind of uh, turning and coming into the middle of the wall here instead of just going straight is because we're going to use the same rail to get villagers into all four of those holes and so I don't want it to just go straight into the first one because once that one's filled up then we'll have to kind of snake around it. So this can be the same branch point that will take us to all four of the different areas. So let's test this thing out. So put our minecart at the very beginning, flip the switch to activate it, and give it a little nudge and this should take us all the way up oh you know what that's slowing down because of the grass I need to remove that grass so I'm not rubbing up against it let's try this again see if it goes any better minecart and go oh that's better yeah look at that and that takes us all the way up to the top perfect Okay, so now let's talk about how we're going to get the villagers up to this area. Uh, as I mentioned in my exploration video, you can actually take a boat up water as long as it's not too steep of an incline. So we're going to put water here and here, and yeah, that'll be good. And because of how Minecraft physics work, water is going to find the, the shortest distance down within like four blocks and so because there are blocks below the water source on this side it's just going to flow that way it's not going to try to flow out in all the directions and so i'm going to put i need to build a wall around this to keep the villagers contained uh, that probably wasn't a very good spot for the lever okay so once we get the villager in here these walls will keep him from getting out but we also don't want them getting out this way. So to fix that, we're going to use fence gates. We'll put fence gates across the top here. And when they're closed, they're a solid block, just like the walls here, and the villager can't get out that way. But we can open them and pass right through them with the boat. So this will allow us to get the villagers into our little minecart area here uh, and not let them get out. Now, let's stop for just a second. Before you go any further, before you transport any villagers, very, very important step. You need to remove all of your villager related blocks within this area. So workstations like the cartography table, gotta go. Workstations like the grindstone, the anvil, the blacksmithing table, gotta go. Even inside our house here things like the smoker gotta go and in addition to that the beds have to go so we don't want villagers binding to the bed in my house uh, or any other beds in the area because as soon as they bind to those things that's going to be considered part of this the village that we're forming up there in, in our structure and if they're bound to something outside of that it's going to completely break the mechanics so go break all of the workstations, break all of the beds in this area, uh, really up to about, I don't know, I'd say 120, 130 blocks away from anywhere that the villagers are going to pass by. So anything between the villager farm all the way along this river up to their final destination, you got to break all that stuff. Just put it in a chest, get it out of the way for now. Uh, that way no, the villagers aren't going to bind to it. I think in all of the testing that I did, that was probably the number one mistake that I made was I left something behind, a villager bound to like the bed in my house or something like that. And once that happened, even if I broke my bed and fixed it, it just seemed to kind of be broken from then on. Now furnaces and crafting tables are not considered workstations. A villager can't bind to these and become like a furnacer or I don't know what you would call that. Uh, so those are okay, but the beds, the, uh, the stone cutters, the smithing tables, 
if you have a blast furnace, you need to get rid of all those things. Uh, otherwise, things are just going to break. And I almost forgot to finish building the rail system up here. Now, we need to get this villager into one of these cubby holes. So I'm going to start with this one since it's the closest. And I'm just going to bring the rail system around this corner. Not all the way to the end. I want it to stop right before the end because the minecart will go off the rails and stop right there. And then the villager won't be able to push the minecart back and forth. But I do need to build a wall that is too high uh, all the way around this so that the villager can't get out. And I'm going to place a sign on the block right above that hole. You'll see what that's for uh, in a little bit. Just like we did at the entrance, we're going to use a fence gate right here so that once we get the villager out of the minecart, he can't get out, but we can get in. Okay, so we're going to head over to our villager farm and grab a villager and try to get this thing started. Not a farmer villager. The, far the farmers are our breeders. We need to leave them here. So we're going to grab one of these other villagers. And okay, let's talk about which villagers you do and don't want to take. You don't want to take any villagers that are already bound to a workstation. That's not going to work. We need fresh villagers. You don't want babies because they're not going to bind to a workstation. And you don't want nitwits, the guys with the green shirts, because they are never going to work. They're not going to bind. So you want a fresh, un, uh, unemployed villager like this guy. Uh, that will be perfect. And we will transport this guy over to our uh, soon-to-be iron farm. Now I'm going to do this phase in the third person camera because I want to keep an eye on the villager and see if he gets any little green sparkles above his head. If he does, that means that he's binding either to a new bed or a workstation or something outside of the uh, village farm, outside the iron farm, and that's going to break the mechanic. So I want to make sure that does not happen. All right, so let's get the villager into our little uh, docking station. And so far, so good. So I'm going to close those gates. I'm going to go ahead and put down the minecart. Uh, turn the power off so it doesn't take off. And then try to break the boat. There we go. And if you're good, you can get him directly into the minecart without him wandering around. So we'll flip the power on this and nudge him back on. And off he goes. So this should take him all the way up. And he will drop off the rails at the very end of this thing. Perfect. We'll get inside, close that behind us, break the minecart very carefully, and then if you're lucky you can nudge him in just like... Nope, not going to be able to do it. So this is why we put the sign there. Uh, you definitely don't want to fall down in there with him, so be careful nudging him. Uh, if things aren't going too well, just place a bucket of water. It will push him down into the hole and the sign actually stops the water from going down into the hole with him. Otherwise, he would start drowning and you, you don't want to drown your villagers. Now, unfortunately, it does kind of wash away your rails, so you'll have to go kind of rebuild the rail, that part of the rail system afterwards. Okay, so we've got one villager in his cubby hole. Before we go back and get any others, we need to take care of two more things. So the first thing is we need to place a bed for this guy. It needs to not be on the ground, so we're going to build a small platform up three blocks, and it's going to go all the way around the kill chamber here. Should have done this at the very beginning, but my head's kind of all over the place today. And then we're going to make this thing too wide, so go all the way around with it one more time. And then you can get rid of these two blocks. Whoops, not the basalt. Okay, so build a little staircase, gets us up into, onto this platform. And we're gonna place the first bed down. Now, where you place this bed, this first bed is very critical. This is going to determine the center of your village. Um, I've had mixed results with where I placed this thing, so I want it to be as close to the middle of this whole structure as possible. So I'm going to put it right there in the middle, and hopefully we get the little green sparkles. There we go. Okay, so he bound to that bed. That's beautiful. Off to a great start. 
Uh, I'm gonna leave that one yellow and for the rest of the beds, for the other 19 beds that this is gonna take, I'm gonna use white. That way I always know which one is the, the center. The other thing that we need to do is put down an actual uh, workstation for him to use. Uh, you can use a number of different workstations. Some won't work, so you don't want to use like a brewing stand or a stone cutter because they're not full blocks. You want something that's a full block that takes up this whole area. So I like to use fletching tables. Uh, they're cheap to make. I think it's four planks and a flint or two flints or something. Uh, and they work very well. So we need to put this crafting table or this workstation down next to this guy so he can use it. So I'm going to break one of these glass and put it down there next to him. Uh, we'll wait to get the green sparkles. And he is now bound to that station. So he's bound to the bed. He's bound to that workstation. We've got our first villager in place. Now we just need to do this 19 more times. <laughs> so this is where I'm going to cut to a little build montage and skip ahead. So we've got five villagers in the first cubby hole over here. They've all been bound to a bed and they've all been bound to a workstation. Uh, good sign is that there's already been some cats that have started to spawn. Uh, that's really good because that means the game is starting to recognize this as a village. Now before we move on to the next cubby hole, there's one last thing that we need to do with this one. We need to put some water at the bottom there. Um, I'm not going to pretend to understand why this is necessary. Like I said, I'm following S Silent Whisper's guide. Uh, he says this has something to do with making sure that they don't unbind from their workstation. So to do this, first of all, we need a water bucket. If you're really good, you can actually target the side of the block to put the water against. Like that. But I can never seem to do it. I always get the villager. <clears throat> it needs to go inside at their feet and so what I've always done uh, someone else gave this tip I don't remember who it was uh, but really good tip is I'm gonna make a, another lever because I'm out <clears throat> and I'm gonna use a dispenser uh, to put the water in there this dispenser is a new type of block that we haven't talked about yet you make this with a bow redstone and cobblestone and then when you place the dispenser, whatever you put inside of it, when the dispenser receives a redstone signal, it will dispense its contents. So we can use this to force the water into uh, the villager hole here. So I'm going to crouch down and put a dispenser right there. I want to make sure it's facing into the villager spot. Uh, use it, put a water bucket inside, place my lever on the side. I need to crouch to do this, otherwise it's just going to open the dispenser again and flip the lever. So now that dispense the water into the cubby hole there. If I turn this off, it's actually going to do nothing, so that's fine. <laughs> I can now break that, break the dispenser, and I need to put something back there. I need to put a glass block, but I don't have any more glass. So that's going to keep them sort of bouncing up and down. Now there was actually... oh darn it. There's something I need to do before I did that. I wanted to put a glass block on top here because now they're bobbing up and down. That's not good. That's not good at all. Okay, good news. <laughs> Replace the dispenser, put an empty bucket in there, and now when it receives a redstone signal, it dispenses the bucket, which is the equivalent of like scooping up the water. So I was able to get the water out of there. Let's put a glass block down on top first, that way they don't bob up and down out of the block. So now we can dispense the water into... Uh, there we go. Dispense the water into the villager slot. Break the lever. Break the dispenser. Put the glass back. And now that little compartment is done. Those five villagers are in place. They're bound. Uh, they're working. That's good. So we need to break down this little track here and we'll get started on the next one. Uh. 
Alright guys, so this is our very last villager on his way to his new home. Uh, this was a long time in the making to get all 20 villagers in here. Uh, ran into just a few small issues. I noticed after a couple of transports that some of my villagers started to get green sparkles right around the bridge. And it finally dawned on me that I still had a bed underground in the, uh, in the caves where I was doing the strip mining. So I had to go remove that. But the first villager that we moved over here didn't get the green sparkles. I don't think he binded to anything. So we should be okay there. So this will be bed number 20, and once we place this bed down, Iron Golem should start spawning. Now we're not done at this point, we still need to put a top level to this thing because the Iron Golems could spawn on top of the beds, or on the walls, or on the glass, and we don't want that. Uh, so we've still got some more work to do, but if everything went according to plan, then after this bed we should start to get some Iron Golems uh, to spawn. And there we go, there's our very first Iron Golem. I think that means that we did everything correctly. <laughs> I'm actually kind of surprised. Uh, I was expecting that to be a little more trouble. So we still need to put down this last workstation. Um, I need to go seal off the top so that they don't start bouncing up and down. Alright, so before we move on to the top layer, we need to finish this layer. Uh, these stones in the middle were really only to place the beds. We need to get rid of them because as you can see the iron golems are uh, they're like two and a half or three blocks tall and they can't fit under there, but they can fit under the beds. So we just need to get rid of all these uh, blocks in the middle and then our iron golems will be able to fall down into the kill chamber once we put the water in. Alright, next we're going to actually need to turn this into a proper kill chamber because once we finish up here, we really don't want to come back down into this, into this area to remove the dirt or do anything else. So we're going to start by removing the dirt that's already here. And so at this point you're going to be want, you're going to want to be very very careful around the center area so that you don't fall in because if you do not only are you going to die but it's going to be very slow and painful the entire time. All right, so we're going to start by placing a sign on the other side and then aim for right above that. We want to put a sign on top of it like that. At this point we're just going to fill in the whole area with signs. I will put some on the sides here and some on the other side as well. What these signs are going to do are they're, they're going to stop water from flowing down into the lava. We could have just put them down one layer like we did for underneath the lava, but then the water would end up flowing on top of the signs and it just doesn't look as good. I liked uh, the tutorial that I watched for this had the signs this way and I thought it looked a lot better. Next we're going to need to line the entire inside of this on the edges with water. So we'll start on this side, put a bucket of water down there. Skip a block and put another one right there, and at that point we should have an infinite water source. And so skip every other block, and you can just go back and grab some of the water that you've already placed. The water is going to be pushing you towards the center chamber, that's the whole point of this. So you're going to have to swim against the water and be very careful. Uh, maybe we can be a little bit smarter about this, maybe we can get up on the walls. Yeah, that seems like a better idea. <laughs> then we don't have to worry about the water. Now, trigger warning, if you remember at the very beginning we put some campfires underneath the lava. Uh, you may have figured it out by now, but sadly, uh, the campfires are to deal with the cats that spawn as a result of the villagers. Uh, they will pass right through the lava, the lava won't burn them, and they'll just end up at the very bottom, stuck there forever, so the campfires are to put them out of their misery. And side effect, when you kill cats, you get string, so we will see a lot of string ending up in our chest at the bottom, but unfortunately they make quite a pitiful sound when they're dying, and I really hate it. Okay, so we've got all of our water in the bottom. One last thing we need to do is put some slabs on these corners to prevent spawns on the corners, and then also some slabs around the walls here. I suppose if you didn't want the cats to die, you could get rid of the campfires and just leave an opening at the very bottom that's one block tall. That way they could get out when they fall down there. Um, yeah, I mean, that would work. I actually I like the free supply of string, so I'm going to leave it. Look at that. Perfect. Exactly as many slabs as I needed. And with that, we are actually done with the bottom half of this. Now we just need to build one more layer on top. It's going to go so much faster because we don't have to do any of the villagers or 
anything special. We just literally put a top layer, build a wall around it, and fill it with water. So it's going to go a lot quicker. Okay, so for the top layer, you can actually just start uh, right on top of the villagers here and just start going out. So I'm going to do this the exact same way I did the, uh, the bottom layer. I'm going to just do a basalt floor and then I'll do some uh, blackstone brick walls around the outside. The floor only needs to go out to the edge of the floor in the bottom because remember our wall sticks out by one block. So don't take the floor all the way out to the, to the wall here. Now just like we did on the bottom, we're going to leave a 3x3 three three hole on the top so that any golems that spawn up here can also fall down into the bottom. Okay, so we finished with the top section. Uh, we're going to do the same thing with the signs here. So we'll put one down, put one on top of it, and then uh, come out three, put some on the sides, and do the same thing on the other side. So we're going to do the exact same thing up here with the signs and the water and the walls and everything. There just won't be all the other stuff in the way. So the iron golems that spawn up here will just get washed down and go straight down the same kill chute, which <laughs> for some reason he just decided to do all on his own. Nice. And then we're going to put a wall of blackstone bricks all the way around this thing. And then in each corner, go ahead and put one block inside on the floor. All right, then also in each corner, next to the block that's on the floor, go ahead and put two more blocks up on the wall so you get this sort of elevated corner like this. All right, and then finally, we need to go through and put water, uh, put water in all four corners and then where the water drops off, skip that block and just go one over from there. And then just like below, we're just going to fill each side with water all the way across. And with that, we are done. So we can get rid of all these temporary blocks that we used to get up here. And at this point, the iron farm is fully functioning. The iron golem should spawn either in the bottom layer where the villagers are, or in the top layer, which is wide open, uh, they should never spawn below it. If they spawn below it, uh, something went wrong. Um, maybe go back and watch the beginning of the build again. If they spawn outside of it, again, one of your villagers may have bound to a bed outside of the farm before you put them in there. Uh, so just keep an eye on things. But at this point, it should be fully functional and will just be an unending supply of iron. Now I am going to come back sometime off camera and kind of decorate this a little bit. Um, what we've done with it so far is starting to look good, but it's still just kind of bleh, some sort of plain and flat and boring. And I'm not a big fan of floating structures that just kind of hang in the sky like that. So one of the reasons I picked this spot was because of the hillside. We can very easily fill this in with walls of some sort and then maybe have an opening over here with doors that allow us to get into the inside here. Maybe I'll do something with the inside to decorate it to make it look nice. But as far as the functioning iron forearm goes, this is complete. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to come empty the chest here because it's been running while I was finishing up the top. And I'm just going to let this thing run for an hour and see how much iron we get from it. Starting now. <laughs> All right, guys, so it has been just under an hour uh, I spent most of the time just harvesting my sugar cane, my crops, started doing a little bit of uh, more structural build for this thing, uh, mixing some cobblestone in with the uh, basalt for the base, threw in some iron bars. Uh, don't quite know how I feel about the cobblestone just yet. I like that it adds some variety and it's the same texture as the basalt, but I'm, yeah, I don't know. I'm not sold on it yet, so still playing around with it. Uh, things have been running great. I uh, haven't had any issues with this so far. No iron golems spawning outside of the structure. So yeah, it's been pretty good. So let's see how, how things went after one hour of AFK. And I did stay in pretty much this whole general area so that this thing would be running the whole time. I didn't go off to the villager farm or to the nether or really outside of this area. So let's see, one hour, how do we do? Look at that. Almost four full stacks of iron. So that's 250, that's about 300 iron for one hour's worth of really doing nothing. <laughs> I just did other stuff, 300 free iron in the meantime. So that's fantastic. So that's going to wrap things up for today. Thank y'all so much for watching. This was our biggest build by far. 
uh, that thing off in the distance. We're going to get so much iron from that. It's going to be great. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I really enjoyed working on it. I'm really pleased with how it turned out. I'm glad that it actually worked considering my success rate with iron farms. Hope you learned something. Hope you're able to get it to work as well. If you do have any issues with this build, please drop a comment below and I'll see if I can help you out. And if you're enjoying this series, please like this video and subscribe so that you can get notified of future videos as they come out. Thank you guys so much and have a great day.